Hi everyone and welcome to this short video about the Privilege Identity Management in Azure Synapse. PIM, our Privilege Identity Management, is a feature in Azure ED. It can be used with Synapse or any other service and it goes like this. If we have a user and this user has only a reader permission to Synapse Workspace, they need to do a high privilege uh, action, for example, changing Spark pool. They cannot do this, so we need to give them permission for a short period of time and we need to do this in a safe way and a practical way so you don't have to remember to give them permission and then remove it back again. The solution for this will be using uh, PIM. So the scenario goes like this. First, the administrator assign owner permission to our user. Second, our user will request to activate this assignment because the assignment does not say you are owner, but it says you can be an owner. So the second part will be the activation. The third part will be the approval, and it can be done automatically, as we will see in the demo. And then the user will be owner for this workspace for a period of time that will expire automatically, and the user does not have to worry about this. So let's see the demo. First part of our demo is the initial state. Uh, in this case, our user, Amy, she has only reader permission over a Synapse workspace. I can go and check by uh, logging by, by the Amy's user and access control, view my access. I only have a reader permission over the workspace. Inside the workspace itself, I have the permission as a artifact user so Amy is part of Synapse Workspace Reader and Synapse Workspace Reader group is artifact user so she can see uh, a notebook but she cannot execute it she cannot attach it to a cluster or something like this okay so this is the initial step. will happen is the administrator will log into the Azure Active Directory and then we'll go together to the identity governance, role assignment, and manage resource roles. We have two different role assignments, Azure ED roles, uh, like global admin or something like this, and resource roles. In resource roles, I will see my subscriptions here. Now, um, I can change the type and that's what I will do now, but if you never used this before or you, you as, as a global admin never used this before, uh, first make sure that you ha your Azure Active Directory has a, a license for this. We need to have P2 license for Azure AD or E5 license. This is one. Uh, two, you need to uh, enroll your subscription uh, if you don't see it so if this if you don't see any subscription here you go to discover uh, resources and you uh, add your subscription I have it already enrolled so it's already enrolled but if it's not enrolled then you need to have it uh, enrolled once you have your subscription enrolled now I can go and I need to change my filter I can do it over the, the level of resource, resource group, or subscription, or management group. I need to do this over a resource, and I know my resource name. All right, so this is my resource. Then I will go to roles. And I choose which role I need to assign the user to. So I'm going to go to the owner role. And I'm going to add assignment. And then I will use my user. And in our case. Now I'm um, giving Emmy the eligibility whenever she wants to be acting as an owner for a year. For the coming year. Assign. Once the assigning completed, I will get notification and I will get also an email sent to me 
telling me that th this is actually sent to all the uh, global admin telling me that there is a new assignment for the privilege identity management. Okay, so this is the first part. Now, after the administrator grant the permission uh, to to Emmy to be an owner for the the workspace, uh, whenever she she, she she wants to activate it, uh, then the next part will be for Emmy to activate it. And to do this, we need to start with Emmy login to the Azure portal, and then we go to the Azure ED Privilege Identity Management. And after that, we will go for my role. That's Emmy's roles. And this role is an Azure resource. And she would see that she has a permission to be an owner if and when she wants to do this. so uh, for the coming year. So from now until next year, she can do this. OK, so let's start with activating. Now, here, Amy will, will decide for how long. I need to have this permission or she needs to have this permission for one hour. OK. It can be one hour in the future as well. So I can decide to have this permission in the future, but I need it now. And the uh, the reason is change the Spark cluster size, activate. Now we'll see the activation. And the good thing here that once the uh, activation finishes, your browser will automatically refresh. That means we don't have to um, sign out and sign in back again. You see it refreshing. Now, when Amy browse to the Synapse workspace, go to IAM, check my access and she has now owner permission. This is new here. This is just added and this will last for one hour based on her request. Okay, so for now we can go and to the SQL pools and we can change them from here or from inside the, uh, the Synapse Studio if you would like. Manage, Apache Spark pools. And let's change this one to be four nodes. And that's it. So uh, we have seen the the end to end demo where we are giving the permissions and the user will will activate these permissions whenever they want. And the deactivation will happen automatically. So we don't have to uh, waste our resources in scheduling or uh, doing this manually. Thank you. See you next time.